Okay, so under organic chemistry, when you talk about the uh, representation of structures, uh, the basic form of presentation of a structure that you know already is a formula. Okay, that means if you have C2H5, that's a basic uh, way of presenting a structure. Now, more detailed structures that we talk about, uh, so this is called an empirical formula to start with. The basic, the most basic way of representing a structure. Now, in a case where you are depicting the exact number of atoms that may exist in that structure itself, that is called the molecular formula. So, all, both of these we are talked about under stoichiometry. You can basically review that lesson on that. So, empirical formula just shows the ratio, the lowest ratio, and then molecular formula shows the exact number of atoms. Of each element contained in a structure okay then the other way of presenting structures that we talked about is the issue of Lewis structures of course some textbooks want to confuse you you can call it structures and what whatever but the basic form of a Lewis structure is a line bond structure something like that depicting it that way that's one way we can look at a uh, Lewis structure of course, in some other structures, you'd want to show, instead of showing the line, you may want to show the electrons. So you know that for each bond, there are two electrons there. So you can actually show that by putting the the dots like that. Okay. So these are the basic ways of presenting the structures. Okay. Now, we want to talk about skeletal structures, which is like another way in which you can present the structures, basically. So how do you go about it so there are just a few things that i would want you to note as you talk about the skeletal structures so before i actually give you any rules i'll just start with a very example c2h4 in this case you've got two maybe to make it more interesting let me make it ch5 or maybe ch4 c4 and then h of course would be 10. so in such a case i'll count so one two three four so what is the basic way of showing that structure if we add another one let's say c5 and then h12 the structure would be as follows so equally one two three four five so i'm sure now you are getting the basic idea on how you basically get to go about the structure so the first rules that we've seen in this in these two structures that i've given you is it the carbons are not shown they are not visible on the skeletal structure okay as you can see these are also called the borderline structures so the carbons are not visible the hydrogens are also not visible right okay now carbons are assumed to be at the end and also at every intersection or turning point so if you look at that point all the points where we've got so all those points those are the points where you expect the carbons to be found so that's how we, that's how we get to count so in this case you're counting as one two three four and five okay so that is the way you basically get to now the other way I, want to, I would also want you to think about is that if you look at that case here we've got two bonds meeting there so what that tells you is I already established to say every carbon has got like four four bonds attached to it so in, in the case where it has only has got two bonds it means there are two hydrogens there even there there are two even there there are two now at the end there should be three okay so if you get to add these numbers three plus two five plus two seven nine ten eleven twelve so which actually adds up so basically that's the basic introduction to the skeletal structures now the other things that i would want you to know is the atro atoms so the atro atoms we're talking about are these atoms that are not hydrogen and carbon okay things like the oxygen the nitrogen let me just say all the other elements except carbon and hydrogen they are called atro atoms these ones are supposed to be visible in every skeletal structure what I mean by that is, in a case where you have got a structure like CH3, CH2, CH2, 
and then OH at the end. How do you present it? So first of all, start with a number of carbons, right? So we have one, two, three. Okay, so start. So one, two, three. Okay, we are done with the carbons. Now we've got an OH there, so we can extend another bond. Now, if we leave it like that, it means that at the end there's also another carbon, which means we are presenting a different structure from the one that we have. So what do you do? You need to show the etro atoms. And if a hydrogen atom is attached to an etro atom, it's also supposed to be shown. Like in this case, hydrogen is visible only because it is part of the oxygen. Okay. So when somebody sees this structure, they will easily be able to understand. They will know that, okay, here there's a carbon, there's a carbon, there's a carbon, and then at the end there is the OH group. Okay. That is the way you're supposed to present the skeletal structures. Okay, let me give you another example. So, even in a case where you have CH3, for example, and then you have CH, and then you have chlorine there, and then you get to have CH2, and then you get to have, at the end, um, let's say the same OH so this is going to be the same idea the basic idea is going to be the same so the number of carbons we have here are three so one two and three and then at the end we've got OH okay now you can see that we also have another extra extra atom that we have chlorine which is on carbon one so it's carbon carbon 2. So we'll show it branching off. Okay, so all the etro atoms are visible. All the etro atoms are visible. And this is clear enough because this carbon is only having a single hydrogen, meaning that the other three bonds have been taken by connection to other ca another carbon, to the other two carbons, and then connection to the chlorine, meaning that it only require an extra hydrogen. Okay. So as a, as a skeletal structure, you only show the skeletal, <laughs> you only show the etro atoms and including hydrogen connected to an etro atom. That's what you basically get to show. Okay. And then let me give you another structure. Let's say we have CH3, CH2, CH, and then you have CH3, and then two there. How basically can you depict that? So feel free to pause the video and try this one out as your testing point for the foundation we've talked about. So we've got one, two, three. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll start with the first three. So one, two, three. What is happening there after? We've got two. Now, when you look at CH3, CH3 exists at the end, right? They exist at the end. So what that means is we can't say if we add two more, if we count them to be five, then we are wrong. If we say one, two, three, four, five, it means we are wrong. In such a case, that's a different structure. In this case, it's instead going to come out this way. There will be one there, and then there will be one there. So that is the clear picture we have. So that means that we have... CH3 at the end, and then CH3 at the end, and then this one should only have a single hydrogen, and then that one there should have two, and then that one should have three. So the CH3 only exists at the end. So that's the basic idea. That's one thing that I also wanted you to take note of. So that would mean that in a case where if you had, if we had a subscript of three, there, it would mean that we have another one separately at the end. Okay? So, pay attention to that as well as you look at your skeletal structures. Okay? So, there are other things that you need to take note of. Things like uh, the triple bonds as well, the double bonds, all those things are also shown under skeletal structures. I can give you an example. In a case where you've got this structure, CH3, and then you get to have C. 
with a triple bond. Okay, let's say double bond. And then, what else do you expect the other one to be CH2? CH and then CH, uh, CH3, right? Okay, how do you present that one? So, look at the number of carbons you have. One, two, three, four. So, one, two, three, four. Are we done? If we say we are done, then we have just presented a normal alkene. Now, there's a case where we've got a double bond. Where do we have a double bond? Between the second and the third. So here you need to show another line to indicate that it's a double bond. It's supposed to be straight as well. Okay? And then, what else? Pretty much that's the only thing that makes it unique. If we had a triple bond there, it would mean that it's supposed to be a triple bond. So even the triple bonds are also clear, should be clear and visible on a given skeletal structure. Okay, that's one thing that is very important. What about in a case where you have uh, something like this? I want you to look at this structure. They like it a lot. And then they ask you to draw the, the Lewis structure. Or even give the formula of that structure. How would you basically give it? So the basic idea is, it means there's a, an end there and an end there. So meaning that there's a carbon at the end, a carbon there, and a carbon there, and then a carbon at the end. So of course, this carbon at this point is connected to three bonds, this side and then one bond this side. Meaning that it no need of it having a hydrogen. So for the other one as well. Then the, these, these ones at the end. Are going to have three more <clears throat> so you have something like ch3 and then you have c and then there's a triple bond to another c and then it's single bond to another methyl group at the end okay that's basically what we're trying to talk about in terms of the Lewis structure it would be clear clear to something like this and then of course you show the hydrogen is there. Okay. I just believe and hope this is giving you an introduction and a basic idea, basic understanding of how you basically get to present your skeletal structures, what should be shown and what should not be shown on the skeletal structure. Okay. So thank you very much for watching.